Hey, fellow Canadians. Ever wonder what makes Canada so great? Sure. We've got stunning landscapes from coast to coast to coast, and let's not forget the best hockey players on the planet. But what truly sets us apart? It's something much deeper than that. Our rights and freedoms. These rights and freedoms aren't just some vague ideas. They're enshrined in our Constitution, specifically in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Think of it as our national rulebook for fairness, equality, and justice. It's the bedrock upon which our entire society is built. This charter, adopted in 1982, isn't just a dusty old document. It's a living, breathing document that impacts the daily lives of every single Canadian. It guarantees us fundamental freedoms, democratic rights, legal protections, and so much more. It ensures that everyone in Canada is treated with dignity and respect, regardless of their background. So let's dive in and explore the essential rights and freedoms guaranteed by the Canadian Charter. Right? First up, let's talk about fundamental freedoms. These are the bedrock rights that are essential to being a free and independent person in Canada. The Charter guarantees us freedom of conscience and religion. This means you're free to believe in whatever you want, or even nothing at all. Nobody can tell you what to think. You're also free to practice your religion openly and without fear. Next up, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. That's a mouthful, but it basically means you're free to think for yourself, form your own opinions, and express them without censorship. This includes speaking your mind, writing what you believe, and even protesting peacefully. It's about having a voice. And let's not forget freedom of peaceful assembly. This means you have the right to gather peacefully with others, whether it's for a protest, a rally, or just a good old-fashioned kitchen party. Finally, freedom of association. This means you're free to join any group or organization you want, whether it's a sports team, a political party, or a book club. It's your choice. Now let's talk about our democratic rights. These are the rights that ensure we all have a say in how our country is run. First and foremost, the right to vote. Every citizen of Canada who is 18 years or older has the right to cast a ballot in elections. It doesn't matter your background, your beliefs, or your income level. Your vote is your voice. And it's not just about voting for others to represent. It's also about the right to run for office ourselves. That's right. Anyone who meets the eligibility criteria can throw their hat in the ring and campaign for public office. That's a democracy in action. But our democratic rights go beyond just election. We also have the right to democratic governments, which means our governments have to operate in a way can't just do whatever they want. They have to answer to us, the people. We get the urge to pack your bags and explore this great land. Well, as Canadians, we have the right to do just that, thanks to our mobility rights. The Charter guarantees us the right to enter, remain in, and leave Canada. That means we're free to come and go as we please whether you're returning home from a trip abroad or simply crossing provincial borders. But our mobility rights don't stop there. We also have the right to move to any province or territory and make our life ourselves. This means we're free to go, study, or start a business anywhere in Canada without facing discrimination based on where we're 
This freedom of movement is a cornerstone of Canadian identity. It allows us to chase dreams, connect with loved ones, and experience the vast diversity of our country. Section 5, Legal Rights, Protection Under the Law. Our legal rights ensure everyone in Canada is treated fairly and justly. The Charter guarantees the right to life, liberty, and security. We have the right to be safe and secure, both physically and in terms of personal autonomy. Police need a warrant to search our homes or belongings. If charged, we have rights to ensure fair treatment in court. This includes being presumed innocent until proven guilty and the right to legal counsel. These rights protect us from arbitrary or abusive power by the state. Section 6, Equality Rights, Equal Before and Under the Law. Now let's talk about a fundamental principle that underpins the entire Charter Equality Rights. The Charter states that every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination. That's a mouthful, but it basically means everyone in Canada is entitled to the same rights and freedoms, regardless of race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability. These grounds of discrimination are not exhaustive and the courts have interpreted the Charter to prohibit discrimination on the basis of other grounds, such as sexual orientation, gender identity, and marital status. The Charter also recognizes that certain groups have historically faced disadvantage and discrimination, and it allows for affirmative action programs to help ameliorate these disadvantages. These programs are designed to promote equality by providing special benefits and opportunities to disadvantaged groups. Section 7. Official language rights, English and French. Canada is a country with two official languages, English and French, and the Charter recognizes the importance of protecting and promoting both of these languages. This means that federal government services must be available in both English and French across the country. So um, whether you're requesting a passport or filing taxes, you have the right to do so in the official language of your choice. But it goes beyond just government services. The Charter also protects the right of English and French linguistic minorities to education in their language. This means that if you're an English speaker living in a predominantly French-speaking area or vice versa, you have the right to have your children educated in your language. Section 8. Enforcement and Limitations. Upholding the Charter. So, we've talked about all these amazing rights and freedoms guaranteed by the Charter. But what happens if they're violated? The courts come in. The Charter has teeth. You can take legal action. Courts can strike down laws and provide remedies. But our rights are not absolute. Limitations must be justified in a free and democratic society. Section 9. Conclusion. The living legacy of our Charter. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms is more than just a legal document. It's a reflection of our values as Canadians, our commitment to fairness, equality, and justice. It's a promise that we will always strive to build a society where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. But the Charter is not a static document. It's a living truth that continues to grow and evolve through the decisions of our courts. As our society changes, so too does our understanding of the Charter and the rights it protects. It's up to all of us to learn about our rights and freedoms, to exercise them responsibly, 
and to defend them when they are threatened. Because ultimately, the Charter is only as strong as our collective commitment to upholding it. So let's celebrate the Charter. Let's use it to build a better Canada. And let's never take it for granted because it truly is one of the things that makes Canada the best country in the world.